feel like I'm on Letterman, but I, I don't have a top 10 list for you, so I don't know where to go with this. <laughs> so like Kevin said, uh, I've known Kevin from, uh, from uh, Cardinal here. Uh, I've been gone for about three years. Um, not planning on coming back. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no offense to you, but the... Uh, I, 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 okay. I, I've told my boss the only person that the only group that would ever be able to pull me away from Microsoft is is probably Disney. Uh, so you know there is some, there is some competition out there, but uh, I really think I found the thing that I love to do, and that's actually what uh, Kevin and I were talking about, and I wanted to talk about this evening. But uh, you know what's kind of interesting is uh, you know I work for Microsoft, and. Uh, uh, you know, as I, as I think through this, where I came from and how I got to Microsoft, I, I, I look back and think, there's no way I, can, I could see this have happening 20 years ago, right? So, so I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, along the way, I've got five kids. And so, um, you know, I, I think about these things as I'm uh, talking with my kids. And I'm saying, you know, what is it that you want to do in your life, right? Because when you got five kids, you don't want five kids living at home, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to ask how many of you are still living at home. I was going to, but I'm not going to. Um, so what we want to do is we want to talk about waking up to that thing you love. Um, I'm not talking about the coffee, right? Um, my wife says I'm a little bit of a coffee snob. Um, I, I drink coffee probably the way the same, some, some of you people like drink your beer or drink your wine, right? You drink it because you want a specific taste, right? You want an IPA or you want to, see, I'm going off in a, in a realm I know nothing about. Because um, I, I don't drink. My, my grandfather was an alcoholic. And uh, so, it, you know, I don't know what I would be like if I drank. And I've done well without it, so I don't, I don't drink. But I drink coffee. And I, uh, if coffee was alcoholic, I'd be a drunk. Uh, I, I probably drink, uh, you know, 40 to 50 ounces a day. Um, so my wife says I'm a little bit of a coffee snob because, you know, I don't, I don't like going to Starbucks. Uh, I have my particular favorites. I like ethically grown coffee, um, single source coffees. Uh, probably my, my favorite is a, a nice Guatemalan, a nice little caramel taste to it. Um, but I, I try to drink my coffee for the, for the subtle taste. So cream, sugar, it's out. We're not doing any of that kind of stuff. We want not, you know, the milk. So, no, what we're talking about is waking up to the job that you love, right? Um, uh, for, uh, I, I, I didn't give Kevin the tweet on this. I have a screenshot uh, of, a, of a tweet that my friend had that said, uh, if, uh, if we spend the majority of our life at work, then loving our job is key to loving our life, right? And so uh, I really got to my that I really wanted to wake up to something that I loved doing. Not just, I didn't want to just wake up and go to work. I wanted to wake up and go to a job that I really loved doing. And so what you do. You really have to love what you're doing or you're going to do the bare minimum you're going to kind of skip by, and you're going to kind of just do status quo and, and get by with the job. But if you're going to do a great job, if you're going to do great work, you really have to love that work. And so uh, the way that you kind of know what you love to do is what's on your to-do list, right? When you look down at that to-do list, is that to-do list something that you're going, ugh. I really don't want to be doing that right now, right? Uh, I don't want to spend time, uh, you know, writing that TPS report, or I don't want to spend this time doing CSS. Kevin may like that. I do not. I'm not a fan of doing CSS. But what is it that you, that, that you love to do? And, and more, more importantly, who owns the thing on the top of your list, right? Is that your boss, or is that somebody that you're, uh, that you're working for or that you're living with? Are they driving what's that thing that's on the top of your list? Or do you drive that thing, right? If somebody else is driving that thing, probably not you're in control of loving what you're doing, right? Somebody else is, is doing that. And so uh, 
we want to actually be a human being doing, right? We want to get away from that to-do list. We want to kind of control that list and manage that ourselves so we can be that human that is being rather than just doing something. So the question I have for you is, what are you doing? How many of you are doing what you love doing? The job, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, dude, I really want to go to work. Okay? There's some hands that go up. You know, I can tell something about you guys, right? Some of you guys, your hand went up like this. Some of you were like, yeah, you know, I, I, I love my job, right? Um, some of you didn't raise your hands at all. So what's right? So what's what? Maybe you don't love what you're doing. And what we're going to do things uh, that, that are, are going to be and uh, I'm going to kind of leave depth, and then I'll kind of give you my story as part of that, right? So the question is, what do you want to be doing, right? Um, what is it that thing that, that would really drive you to doing the right thing, right? Uh, first, though, the key is to know what you want to be doing, right? Do you even know what you want to be doing? When I talk to my kids, I talk to my son, and I say, uh, hey, Stephen, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? And he says, well, I want to be an electrical engineer, Dad. Great. Math's not one of your great subjects. <laughs> do you know what that's going to take to be an electrical engineer? And so we've had to kind of work through some things, and uh, we're exploring ways that uh, we can maybe kind of, uh, you know, go to college without really going to college, right? So we can see, maybe take some college-level math class at, at Columbus State, and figure out if that's really uh, something that he could do four years of, right? Um, my daughter, I said, well, what do you, what do you want to do? She goes, well, Dad, I really don't want to do anything, right? She loves doing crafty things, and, uh, but she doesn't like to make them to sell. Like, I tried to get her to set up Etsy. Uh, at one point, she had a blog that she was creating. Um, she make, she's made, like, the entire Lord of the Rings um, I want to say family, but it's not like a family. It's all the guys. She's like crocheted them, and they got hair, and they got a little, you know, they got the little ring, and, and they got everything, you know, she, and cool stuff. Um, you know, she's got Anna and Elsa from Frozen with the, you know, she's, she's very finely stitched tulips and stuff on the, on the clothes. And I was like, this is great stuff. She's like, I don't want to do it for anybody else, Dad. I do it for myself. <laughs> okay. So we got to go do some exploration. Like, what is it that you want to do with your life? What makes you happy? What do you want to get up and do? And so uh, it's a constant struggle. My, the, the other three kids, the other three boys, they're still at the age where having that conversation is, uh, Dad, I just want to play Halo. Leave me alone. Yeah. Right? Um, so they're not really even thinking about those things just yet. But when I ask the question, what do you want to do, the key is it's probably not the first thing that comes to your mind, right? Um, it's probably not the first offer that you're going to get from college, right? Um, how many of you, let's say, well, let, me, let me kind of back up a little bit. I'm, I've been out of school for 25 years, and uh, I'm not doing anything related to my college degree. So how many of you guys are doing anything related to your college degree? Okay, about a third of you. How many of you are like, nothing even close to you? Like, your college degree was like, uh, I, I wish I would have saved my money, <laughs> right? I see some hands and like, amen, <laughs> right? In the back there. Right? We don't always know what it is that we want to do, right? When we started out of college, we got that college degree, we went out to get a job, and we said, I got an electrical engineering job. What can you do with me? And then we quickly realize there aren't enough of those, or this really isn't what I want to be doing. I thought it was cool. Um, and I'd have this discussion with my son that, you know, what do you want to do about electrical engineering? Um, six years ago, five years ago, we were doing a, uh, we were speaking at a conference in CodeMash, and my son was actually writing code on stage uh, because we had taken a robot apart and kind of reprogrammed it with, with code. 
And I said, is, is that what you want to be doing? Because that's not electrical engineering, right? That's like tinkering with Arduinos. Um, and he's like, no, I, I like doing the soldering and this kind of stuff. Okay, that's still not electrical engineering. You need a little bit more research into what electrical engineering is all about, right? So we have this mindset of we think we know what it is, but we don't really know what that is. But we accepted that offer. We uh, start, you know, we, we take the thing that's gonna pay the bills, pay the school bill. And the next thing we know, we find ourselves, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, and we've taken this path that's uh, pretty deviant from what we had started out thinking we were gonna do. Uh, it's probably not what you were doing today. Uh, this, this number, 70%, 70% of the time, 70% uh, of college graduates do nothing related to their college degree, statistically, right? 70%, um, right? But we spend all this money to get that degree, right? But it's not even what we really want to be doing. It's probably not what you're going to wake up to tomorrow, unless you were one of those people that said, hey, I, I love what I do, right? So if you're not one of those people, uh, where are you? Uh, it is the cause of most midlife crisis, right? I get 20 years into my job and I, I wake up and I go, what am I doing, right? And so then I, I all of a sudden start looking back and saying, but that was what I really wanted to be doing. And so I start to kind of unwind some things and, and try to, you know, well, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go try this, and right, I, I, I'm going to just randomly change jobs, or I'm going to randomly go buy a car, right, because, you know, I, I always wanted a really cool car in high school, and so now I'm going to get one, because uh, my job certainly isn't giving me any kind of satisfaction, so I need to get a cool car, or, you know, maybe I need to go buy a house. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, one question that I always like to ask people is, if there was only one thing you could do today, what would it be? Would it be the thing that you're doing at work? Now, I want to couch this as I'm not asking you if you only had one thing left to do in your life, right? Because if it was me, I'd be at Disney World. Um, right? If there was only one thing that you did today, would it be the thing that you were doing at work? Right? Would you really enjoy doing that thing if it was the only thing you did today? So we want to talk about finding what it is that you want. And uh, you know, it could be Pikachu going after that ball. But um, the things that we have to think about when we're going to find that thing is that often our personal opinions are wrong, right? We thought we knew what we wanted to do. We thought we knew how to get there. But our personal opinions are often wrong. And what we generally need to do is, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. I want uh, we need to be talking to the right people, right? We need to go and say, what is it that I need to be doing to get this thing that I want to do? If I want to be a web designer, what do I do? If I want to be an artist, if I want to be a graphic designer, if I want to be a project manager, if I want to be an electrical engineer, software programmer, what is it that I have to know? Are you talking to the right people to know what you need to be doing? When you talk to mentors, when you talk to advisors, right, they need to be willing to be honest with you and tell you, you are so not ready for this, right? Um, it's hard. It's hard to be a, a dad and look at your son and say, dude, we got to work on your math, right? Because I know that's what you want, but you're not ready, right? And, and it's hard to find those people, but it's super important that when you're, when you're going to make a change or when you're going to try to find that thing that it is that you want to do, you've got to find somebody that can be brutally honest with you, not to, to scold you or to put you down or anything like that, but give you some honest feedback about you're not ready for this or there are some things that, that you need to do. Um, but it needs to be some place that somebody that's advising from a position of authority, right? Don't go ask a pro project manager what you have to know to be an electrical engineer. They're not probably going to know. Um, 
don't ask me what a, an electrical engineer does, right? Uh, my son looks at me and says, well, what do they do, Dad? I don't know, right? What kind of jobs can you get as an electrical engineer? And so we actually sought out some of our friends. And, uh, you know, my son went over and did, uh, uh, you know, spent a couple of days shadowing some guys. Uh, you know, one at a company here in town, one at a company uh, up near Toledo. Spend some time with electrical engineers. See what it is that they do. Is that really what you want to spend your time doing, right? And uh, he came home more excited about it than ever, so apparently he's on the right track. He knows what he wants. So, all right, so now what we want to do is we want to talk about five practical things that we can do, right? So we've kind of teed this up. We've kind of set the tone for where we want to go. Five practical tips. And these five practical, practical tips are the things that I took in my journey to find the job that I love. I literally love what I'm doing. Uh, I work for Microsoft. I get to wake up every morning, learn new technology, and then I get to go out and talk with uh, students, uh, developer user groups, uh, startup companies. I get to show them how to build cool stuff with technology. Um, and I work at Microsoft, right? So sometimes it's uh, Windows and .NET. Sometimes it's Linux and Java, right? Because we can run those in the cloud. And so I get to work with developers and just show them how to build it and do it with Microsoft. And it's a great job. I love what I'm doing. So the first thing I did was uh, I was actually at Code Mash uh, in 2013. Um, I came home from Code Mash and I had, had, had talked with this guy, Chad Campbell, um, or, I, or I had read his blog. I can't remember which of the two it was, but I came home from Code Mash. Uh, and I realized that I needed to make a change. The things that I was doing, uh, I did not love uh, what I was doing. Um, somebody else, you know, I'd been doing consulting for 17 years. I was independent for seven of those years. Um, and, and things that I liked doing, but there were some things that I didn't like doing. And I, I realized that I just, you know, I was kind of getting by. I was just moving along and just doing stuff. So this is kind of my journey that I took, and uh, I, I believe that I found the thing that I truly love to do. And so I started with this uh, love it, hate it list. So the first thing I did is I went through and I said, what is it in the past uh, 20 years, what are the things that I've loved to do, right? Uh, what is it that makes me get up before that alarm clock goes off, right? Um, I, I know my alarm clock is set for 6.30, but, you know, my eyes kind of open at 6. Am I just going to lay there till 6.30 or 7 or 8? Sometimes that I do that. But what is it that makes me get up before that alarm clock goes off? I got some stuff I get to do, right? Um, what is it that makes you stay up late? Uh, there's, there's something new going on, right? Um, there's, this is build week. So if you guys don't follow Microsoft, uh, this is our week where we make huge announcements about all the cool stuff that we're doing. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I'll stay up late and watch videos, uh, announcements of stuff that we're doing. Uh, when we get to the end, I have a video I want to show you guys. But uh, what makes you stay up really late at night? Uh, what makes you smile on the inside? Right? What makes you happy uh, to, that, that you did something? What makes you proud? What, what accomplishments are you doing? When you get done with work and you deliver a project to a customer or you get done with a, a release or something, do you look at that and say, man, I did some pretty cool work, right? Or do you kind of just, well, whatever, I had to stay up overnight for a release again, right? What work makes you feel awesome? Um, these are the things that, make, that, that you love, right? What are the things that you would do even if you did it for free, right? Those are probably key things that you would love to do. Then what you do is you make a list of all the things you hate to do, right? Cleaning toilets and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. What makes you push that snooze button, right? Alarm is going off. Oh, man, I gotta get up for work. Don't wanna do that. I'm gonna push my alarm. I gotta come up with some excuse like my battery died in my car or something, just so I don't have to go to work. I don't have to get to that meeting. Uh, right, which are the ones would I go to the dentist to avoid? Now, this isn't one that like Kevin could write down because as I was talking with Kevin, he says, oh, I love going to the dentist. Ugh. Okay, so my, this is one thing that my wife and I agree on. The dentist is not a good person, right? 
Um, the dentist is this little guy right here. Yes, he's the evil guy. Um, so what would, what, who's the, what's the thing that you would actually, you know, rather go like to the dentist or do something terrible uh, than you would to avoid that? What are the things you don't like doing? Uh, you know, filing, writing reports or uh, typing up, uh, you know, charts or fixing other people's bugs because they can't figure out how to write unit tests or stuff like that, right? Um, are there things that uh, you are easily pulled away from? Right? Uh, things that I'm, I'm here doing this and, you know, squirrel, I'm off to do something else because this doesn't hold my attention like those other things, right? Then what I'm gonna do is, is you're gonna take that hate list and you're gonna wad it up and throw it away. This is exactly where I was. I, I said, I came home from code, I needed to make it. I spent two weeks writing down, love it, hate it. I had sheets and sheets of paper. These are the things that I love to do over 17 years of, uh, of consulting. These are the things that I hate doing. I hate negotiating with customers, right? They're always wrong, I'm always right. I hate negotiating with customers. Um, when I got done though, I realized that that list of things that I hated, I did not want that to be my focus. I did not want to focus on not doing the things that I hated. I wanted to focus on the things that I loved doing. And so I took my uh, love it list and I posted it up on the wall and I began a new list. That list was, who do I know that's doing those things, right? And I just began, I spent another two weeks and as I thought through the list, I'd, I'd go through all my friends and I'd say, well, let's see, Kevin Mack. Nope, he doesn't do any of these things. <laughs> That's why I don't work with Kevin, right? Um, so I just, I began, sorry, Kevin, I'm just going to keep calling you out like that. Um, so I would keep, that, keep going on this list and uh, I would build out uh, a list of people that I knew were doing the things that I wanted to be doing. So this leads me to the tip number two, right? Find somebody that's already doing the things that you love doing. And uh, so it's not just about finding that person. Um, you know, like I said, I took, I took two weeks and spent time, um, uh, you know, building that list, finding the people. Um, met them. Uh, I took them out for lunch and I said, hey, what is it that you do? What does a typical day look like for you? Right, because I wanted to understand not just, hey, it looks like you do a cool job. I wanted to truly understand what it is that your day looks like. And so I, I took him out for lunch. At the end of the lunch, I said, hey, are there a couple other guys that I could meet that you could introduce me to? And so uh, they'd introduce me to a couple more guys and I'd, I'd meet with them. I had this list, it was kind of this interview list, right? Uh, I was actually interviewing them, right? I'm, I'm looking for a new job, but I'm interviewing them, not them interviewing me. Um, so I went down the list and, you know, what is it that you do? And when I found somebody that did something kind of cool, I'd be like, that's really interesting. So what do I need to know how to do that? And they'd go the, through the list and I'd be like, hmm, that's not something I know how to do, huh? What's the best way to learn that, right? And so I would, uh, I remember going to lunch with one guy, um, up off of Polaris and uh, we went to lunch and he said, well, you know, you really need to know how to do wind debug. Never done wind debug. Anybody, anybody here done wind, wind debug? Okay. You can ask me, I've, I've not really needed to, but what he does, he does it all the time, right? So I asked him, I said, well, if that was something I wanted to get into doing, what would I need to learn how to do that? And he kind of gave me a list and uh, so I wrote some notes down. And uh, I asked him to point me to some blogs and some books. And uh, a few weeks later, I called him back and I said, so do I, do I got this? Have I, have I kind of figured out how this works, right? And he's like, yeah, you got that. All right, can you introduce me to two more guys that are doing this same kind of thing? I want to talk to them too. And so I talked to those guys and I, I quickly realized that the guy I talked to kind of had the, the cushy side of the, the job. The other guys, the other two guys that he introduced me to, their jobs were significantly different because they worked with completely different customers. And I realized that, hmm, I could take that job, but if I could, I could be in a world of hurt here. So I chose not to go down that path. And uh, 
So I began interviewing. All told, I ended up interviewing about 30 different people before I kind of settled on two roles that I was interested in uh, at Microsoft. And that brings me to tip number three. Well, tip number three actually was kind of part of that last one. Never stop learning, right? Uh, as I was talking with uh, this, this guy up on, on Polaris, I was like, what do I need to learn? What do I need to learn? How do I, how do I you know, figure these things out? So uh, what do I need to do to get started? And then the next one is like, what is the next step? If this is the thing that I wanted to do, uh, what is the next thing that I have to do? Right? Uh, sometimes you have to take a step back and say, uh, maybe it's not even just a new job. Right? Maybe it's there's something I can change about my work that would make me love it. Um, there's a guy that wrote a book called Great Work. And in that work, in that book, he said that oftentimes uh, the thing that you have to change about the work that you're doing to love it is to change your perspective on who you're doing it for, right? And he says, uh, you know, if you can, satisfaction and love of work can come from knowing you made a difference for others, right? Thinking back to those things that you love, right? Things that make you smile inside, things that make you proud, things that you love to do. Very often, it's just knowing that you made a difference in somebody else's life, right? So it's kind of changing your perspective on what it is that you're actually trying to do. It may not be what you want, but how do you make it count, right? I may, this may not, it may not be fun for me to be doing CSS, but if the work that I'm doing can count. I just did a project uh, for um, a group called Gamers Outreach. Has anybody heard of Gamers Outreach? Okay. Go out to gamersoutreach.org. If you love playing video games. Uh, really cool group. They put together video game carts and they drop them off at hospitals and they, uh, they take them down to kids in the hospital that are there for a long-term stay. Um, they, you know, are like having, you know, surgery, bandages that are being changed on a regular basis. At one point, I was talking with the, the CEO, and he says, you know, one, the one kid was having his bandages changed. It took four nurses to hold that kid down to change his uh, dressings. They bring in a, uh, a gamer's uh, outreach cart. They call them go-karts, right, for gamer's outreach. They call them go-karts. They bring in this go-kart, and now they have one, one nurse who's player two, the kid is player one, and one nurse is changing the dressing, and he, nobody has to hold him down. Right? He's completely distracted from that. So they went from four nurses holding this kid down, causing a lot of stress, to two nurses getting the job done. Right? Those other two nurses? They're down the hall helping other people, right? A change of perspective because, you know, making it count, right? Um, if you realize that it's the wrong direction that you're headed, change directions. Uh, one of the things we used to always say uh, was change where you work, make changes to the current environment that you're already in, make, the, make it the environment you want to be, or change where you work, right? This is always the first thing, right? Change where you're working right now, because you have the opportunity to make changes in your current role, in your current position. But if you can't make that change, then what you need to do is change where you work. Go someplace else, make a difference someplace else, right? Um, it took me a full year from the time that I started looking for something different to actually doing something different, right? So it's gonna take some time. And that's the last one here, is that patience is a virtue, right? Uh, it's not gonna come tomorrow. Uh, we said earlier, it's not, it's not necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. It's not the first offer you're gonna get. It's not something you're gonna wake up in tomorrow, right? You're gonna have to be patient. Sometimes patience is a necessity. It's gonna take some time, you're gonna have to hang on, you're gonna have to wait. Uh, it's gonna take some time, but if you jump the gun, what you're gonna find is 
that you may have put yourself on a trajectory that's even farther in the direction that you don't want to go, right? So you want to, you want to patiently find that thing that you're doing, change your perspective about the work that you're doing, try to change the environment that you're in before you try to make uh, the, the big change of, of going to something else, right? Here are a couple of questions that we want to kind of think about as we finish up here, right? Is what I'm investing in today going to help me love what I do tomorrow? Are the things that I'm learning are the things that I'm working on today, are those things that ultimately point me in the direction that I want to be going? Or am I wasting my time? Um, am I spending my time doing these things? This is why it's critically important to know who owns your to-do list. Is the thing at the top of your to-do list, the thing that you're investing in, is that getting you to the thing that you love? Maybe you need to get up. Uh, you know, your alarm, I don't know what time your alarm goes off, right? Maybe your alarm goes off at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Maybe you need to get up at 6 o'clock so that, that that thing that's at the top of your list can be the thing that you're investing in yourself first before you head off to work, right? Maybe it's spending some time staying up late, right? Investing in yourself to get yourself to that point that you can make the change, right? Uh, the other one is, uh, don't let fear be the thing that stops you. I was, if you asked me five years ago, if I would have thought I would be working, I would have told you no way. I didn't think there was a chance I could do it, right? Uh, one, I hadn't been doing like, the stuff, right? Uh, I hadn't been doing like cool work. I'd just been doing uh, work at... Uh, a local bank. I don't know if I can mention my clients by name anymore, but uh, you know, I'd been working, I'd just been doing, you know, bug fixes and kind of random web work and, you know, I was kind of like bored in what I was doing. But um, if you would have asked me if those were the things that could have gotten me the job at Microsoft, I would have said, no, not, not interested. Um, uh, there's no way I would even get a, like, a callback interview. They'd just look, look at the resume and be like, yeah, next. But I spent time investing in myself, learning what those things are, and uh, getting myself to the point where I felt confident uh, to make that change. But don't let fear be the thing that holds you back. All right? So... Uh, some contact information here. I'm open to any questions that you have about anything that we talked about tonight. Comments. We got plenty of time to socialize on this as well afterward. Yes, there's a question in the back. Do you know anybody that I could talk to to become an electrical engineer? I'm sorry, say again? Do you know anybody that I could talk to to become an electrical engineer? Do I know somebody that you can talk to about, about become, you, you want to become one? You're looking for a job or you, <laughs> you're already studied? Gotcha. Uh, I, well, I actually do. I can, I can introduce you to the to two guys my son went to, uh, to visit and, and follow them around for a day. I, yeah, I could introduce you to somebody that's an electrical engineer. Jeff. So I just want to know what uh, path that wind debug was part of, and also if there are some other paths you considered you didn't ultimately didn't decide on. Okay. So I narrowed my path down at Microsoft. I narrowed my path down to two choices. Um, one was a, uh, a premier field engineer, and one was a technical evangelist. And um, interestingly enough, I made the finals day for both of them. And it was, they, they were both on the same day. And so the recruiter was like, sorry, you have to pick one. I'm like, oh, but what if I pick the wrong one? <laughs> I'm like, this is my only chance. And uh, so I, I was like, okay, well, this is uh, a little bit of background. And in, in, uh, the, the 20 years of consulting, one of the things that I loved the most was I was at Microsoft uh, at Babylon. And I started teaching .NET uh, along the way. And uh, I just, I always loved teaching. 
Uh, I always loved getting people excited about technology. And so when I had the opportunity for the technical evangelist, I was like, that's, that's what I want to do, because it's teaching people. It's, you know, it's, it, that's what I want to do. So that's what ultimately made the choice to, you know, which one I wanted to be. Um, but the wind debug was part of the premier field engineer, which uh, that particular role is a role that's typically embedded with a customer uh, for uh, product support. Um, like when your exchange server goes down in the middle of the night, you're usually talking to premier field, premier field engineer um, for your account if you're a, if you're a large account. Any other questions? There's Mike in the front, Mike in the back. Actually, Sean's in the back and Brian's in the front. But. <laughs> meet all of those people that you interviewed initially like you the first 30 people that you so so just a lot of them started off with uh, with them being my friends uh, I started with my circle of friends and I said you know who are the people that who are the people that I know that I've worked with or had dealings with um, that are doing the kind of things that that I would like to do and um, so uh, one of them was uh, Brian Prince uh, who actually was a technical evangelist before me. And uh, I see somebody back there maybe knows Brian. Uh, interesting story, when I was a Microsoft trainer, Brian Prince was in my class. I was actually teaching him, you know, .NET. So <laughs> that's my only claim to fame with, with Brian. But um, so I kind of started with him. Uh, and then one of the uh, premier field engineers uh, in our office is Brian Jacket, And uh, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. Can you, can you introduce me to any of your friends? And uh, from there, it was complete strangers um, that, that I was being introduced to. Uh, you know, I went to lunch with Ken Kilty. Does anybody know Ken Kilty? Okay. I went to lunch with Ken Kilty. And uh, after lunch with Ken, I said, hey, Ken, can you introduce me to two of your... I never met Ken. Brian Jack had introduced me to Ken. Went to lunch with Ken. Ken, who, who can you introduce me to? He introduced me to a guy in New York and a guy down in Tennessee. And, and like I said, it's just, it's that tree of, of networking. And, um, you know, it's, it's just part of that conversation. Um, and, and, you know, people are, are, are happy to help. Um, when I went to East Africa with my two oldest kids, uh, one of the things that we did was we were doing it as kind of a cultural experience. And uh, so we had some Swahili on, on some cards. And we had one phrase that was like, I'm trying to learn Swahili. Will you please help me? Right? So, so immediately you st set it up. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm trying to talk in Swahili. And so I'm going to go through these kind of these things that I know. And I want you to maybe teach me something new. And so I would learn something new from you know, this person. And I'd go to the next person. And I'd, I'd learn something from them. And the only thing I can remember now is that uh, Mimi Naniki Brian Miguel, you know, that which means my name is Brian. So I think I can remember in, uh, in Swahili. So. And, and they can't say, they, they have a really hard time with the BR sound. So I got Bulayan. That was how they said Brian. So. Just ask. People are more than happy to help. Yes. Hi. Um, so it sounds like you did a lot of networking to kind of prepare you for the job that you wanted. Um, I guess the question is, how much of the networking um, more just kind of showed you what you did and didn't want to do, and how much of the networking actually resulted in you getting the job that you wanted? Good, does, good question. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make, it does make sense. Um, so... There's, I guess there's kind of two pieces to that, right? Because, you know, there's the networking, where do you meet people? You know, a lot of times it was just meeting people here in groups like this. Um, you know, over the years, I, I, like Kevin said, I go to a reuser group that's like known to man. Um, but when it came down to interviewing for the job, once I found somebody who was a technical evangelist, um, I did ask some very specific questions about, 
what the interview process is like, what, it, you know, what kind of questions should I be prepared for, uh, you know, things that you should kind of be thinking of anyway if you're interviewing for a job. Um, but, you know, so, so to some degree there is some play off of that network to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of prepared and, and in the right place. And, and some of that's asking, you know, good, good probing questions. Um, you know, what do you do? Because you know, if the things that I'm asking about what you're doing about your job, um, if those aren't things that I've been doing, then I'm going to have a hard time in an interview uh, about those things. So, you know, I, I might have asked, uh, you know, on the wind debug question. Okay, now what kind of questions am I going to be asked about wind debug that I might have to be able to answer? And he's like, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> but I still knew how to do it. So if somebody asked me if I could do wind debug, I, I could carry on that conversation at least uh, halfway intelligently. I never ask questions either, and this is weird because I hear myself. Uh, but I guess one of the common things is if you're in a job that you're not happy at, what's some advice you would have to like leave and not burn bridges? Um, it's kind of like breaking up with your girlfriend, right? <laughs> it's not you, it's me, right? Um, so yeah. There's definitely ways to burn bridges, right? Um, and you, you can avoid burning, bridge, burning bridges by not making it about the, the terrible work that you're doing, right? Uh, you may not like what you're doing. It may be a really terrible job, right? But that's, there's, in my book, there's never an excuse to leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth, right? You, you, there's never a reason to like completely make yourself look like a jerk. Um, let the other guy be the jerk, right? You, you rise above that. You're going on to something better. You're, you're doing, you know, some, you're doing something that you love. Um, you might have to save up some vacation days in order to do, uh, you know, some interviews and, and those kind of things. Um, you know, you, you might have to do it on personal time. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, never, uh, there's never a good reason to be like, I hate what I'm doing and I'm not going to do it. Um, I, I did it once and I kind of regret it. Um, I, I really didn't like the work I was doing at a, at a particular client. And uh, basically when I went in, they asked me to do some uh, performance tuning on a query. And I began looking at the query and, uh, you know, in about an hour I had this well, so the screen that was, they were populating was taking about 10 seconds to load. And uh, so I went and looked at the query. In about an hour, I had it, you know, sub-second response. Screen was loading super fast. I'm like, oh, that was, that was cool. Can you, uh, can you check out this one? So I looked at that one. And for some reason, somebody was like taking an entire table of data, copying it into a temp table, and then like dropping the table and going and doing something else. It's like. They had started the code and then like figured out another way to do it and never took out the old code that was copying the table. So we just removed, I mean, all I did literally was deleted like five lines of code that was taking a table and copying it over. And oh, miracle, it was running fast. From that point on, I was like the SQL guy and I was, <laughs> I was handed an Excel spreadsheet every morning that said, here's our data problems. And, and I literally got to the point where I could take that Excel spreadsheet and uh, paste in a formula that, was the, that would like, read the five values and it would generate the query and I could just copy and paste the query into uh, SQL Server and execute and it was done. But you know, then I, I started doing this and like two months into this, I'm like, why am I cutting and pasting queries from Excel? This is dumb. Uh, why can't somebody just fix the code? Um, and I, I literally went to my manager, so I was at a consulting company, so I went to my consulting company and my manager there and I said, uh, look, we could find somebody to fill the position that I'm doing right now, it could be a junior developer, I could teach him in two weeks exactly everything he needs to know to do what I'm doing right now, we'd be set, I could go on to something else. And he goes, oh, but, but Brian, you're such a strategic resource here. I said, look, 
Um, and this is where I kind of maybe got to the point where I was burning a bridge. I said, look, um, I will be at the client for two more weeks. Whether that's your choice or mine remains to be seen. And I walked out. Um, I did end up getting pulled off that contract, but probably not uh, like the best career decision that I made. Uh, there was some fallback on that, but um, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, there's better ways to do it, but don't make yourself, don't, don't you become the, the jerk, right? Let, let your company be the jerk. So, um, all right, I, I do, I, I'm gonna take two more questions. Are there two more questions out there? <laughs> all right. No, if you could, uh, on the microphone so that everybody can hear and then the recording. So with five kids. Yes. There were probably lifestyle choices you had to think about. Yes. Before switching to a new job or thinking about what you wanted to do. Could you talk about that some? Sure. Yeah, so with, with five kids, there is a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I've always made it a habit of uh, everything that I do, I try to do it with my, my kids and my family. So. Um, you know, when I get a quadcopter, I'm out flying it with my kids. Um, when, I, when I'm doing electronic stuff, uh, I'm grabbing my kids that are interested and, hey, let's get involved and let's do something. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do stuff with, with them. Uh, I will say that that has been one of the biggest challenges with my Microsoft job. Um, I love my kids and I love my family but I probably spend uh, probably 60% of my time away from them, um, whether it's on the road or uh, just late nights doing stuff, trying to keep up. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it can be somewhat crazy. Um, and every once in a while they say, Dad, Dad, I wish you'd just get a different job. <laughs> and that's when it's hard, that's when it's hard. But I love what I'm doing and they know it, so um, you know, we go from there. So good question, thank you. All right, one more question in the back. Uh, so if you take a job and it's not really what you expect or what you like or know what you love, how long would you recommend staying? Because you can't just like hop a job <laughs> right away after you get it sometimes. But so can you talk about that a little? So yeah, so you don't want to be that guy that's job hopping. So there's two ways to handle that. The first is become a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that I say that half in jest, but one of the reasons I was a consultant for for so long is um, it constantly gave me something new to be doing and working for different companies. Um, I probably have done work for a uh, hundred different companies in Columbus, but I've only worked for I've only been on payroll for uh, eight different companies. So you know that's one way to to kind of mitigate that challenge. Um, the other side to that is, if you're doing due diligence on the, on the front end, like what are you doing, what is it that I'm gonna be doing here? Like, do I, is that really the thing that I wanna do? Um, you probably aren't gonna get yourself into a, like I really hate this in like the two month scenario. Um, you'll, you'll probably be a year into it before you're like, this is for the birds, I can't do this anymore. Um, and, you know, move on from there. But again, then, then start the cycle, which is gonna take you some time to get to the next one that, that's gonna be just right for you. But if you're doing good due diligence on that, you probably won't find yourself being in that like job hopping kind of a scenario. So, all right, one other thing here, I wanna just, uh, I, I have some, some stickers that I, uh, I uh, made. Um, and I'll, put, I'll put them out in the back, but basically just kind of a little reminder to yourself um, to love what you do. And uh, so you can take it. I got the small sticker so it doesn't take up too much room on your laptop or you can put it on the center of your, um, uh, you know, tachometer or your speedometer or whatever. Um, and it won't block out like how fast you're really driving so you don't have to tell the cop, oh, I couldn't see my steering wheel, right? So just something small. Uh, they'll be on the back table. Feel free to gab one. Uh, but again, love what you do. And uh, I love what I do. So thank you.